Last month, we saw the video game debut of one of my favorite ship designs in either Legends or Canon, the Starhawk in Star Wars Squadrons. And some new information has come up about how the ship's design has been in progress, in the real world, not in universe, that I thought would be fun to talk about. I know it's not necessarily everyone's favorite design or the lore behind it isn't everyone's favorite, but to me, this ship has always looked really cool. Before we talk about the design and the background for it, let's talk a little bit about what the ship is. We first hear about the Starhawk at all in the novel Aftermath, life debt. It was one of the earliest New Republic attempts to build their own capital ships after Endor in a push led in the Senate by Mon Mothma. They were part of a secret project undertaken at the Nadiri dockyards, and the ships themselves were made out of captured Imperial Star Destroyers that were stripped down for parts. If you look at the design, you can see several parts that are recognizable from ISDs, like the parts of the bridge that are evident alongside the main structure of the Starhawk. Aside from the prototype, built as the focus of the main plot in Star Wars Squadrons out of the salvaged ISD Victorum, by 5 ABY in the Battle of Jakku a year after Endor, the New Republic had built three others the Concord, Unity, and Amity. The main feature of the Starhawks was an incredibly powerful tractor beam, which was put to use in the Battle of Jakku when the Starhawk Concord was nearly destroyed by the Executor-class Ravager. But as its final act, it managed to latch onto the Ravager with the tractor beam and pull the much larger vessel down into the planet, resulting in the crashed Executor we see on Jakku in The Force Awakens. Despite being such a prominent ship within the new canon in many ways, and being part of a battle that takes front and center in a lot of of the post-Endor stories, the Starhawk is conspicuously absent from a lot of places in media where you would expect it to show up. Most notably, in the Battlefront 2 campaign, you participate in the Battle of Jakku, and you see much of the Imperial fleet, including the Ravager in the battle, but the Starhawk wasn't visibly present in that battle. It wouldn't be until 2020 that we'd get a design for this important vessel, from a relatively unexpected source, Fantasy Flight Games' tabletop game Armada, where it received its own expansion. Fantasy Flight Games has originated many ships and designs for pre-existing ships and also some more obscure ships, primarily through their tabletop RPG supplements, and this is something that I've talked about a fair bit on the channel. But this is the only time that I can think of that we saw a new design for such a prominent part of the canon come from them. There are ships like the Raider that are primarily their invention, but when it comes to something that was known to exist beforehand and didn't have a design, it's kind of surprising that it would come from Fantasy Flight Games. But while this design may have originally showed up in the Fantasy Flight Games releases, and then showed up pretty quickly after if you think about the time that goes into game development in Squadrons, uh, so it seems like the design would have come from 2020, we've actually received some new information which put the design and even a 3D model of the ship back to around 2015. The original concept artist, Pencil Equipped on ArtStation, which I'll link to in the description, recently posted his concept of the ship which was made for an unnamed and unreleased video game, which is speculated to have been the mobile title Rise to Power. He mentions he only had the one line of text to work from, that the ship was, quote, like an axe blade cutting through space, end quote, and he seems to have taken that description to heart. This was also joined on ArtStation by Art Kohar's post, who made the original 3D model, and this post is where we get the figure that it goes back at least five years. He mentions finishing the model during crunch time for the game that was never released, but then those models made their way to EA Motive. These resources obviously made their way to Fantasy Flight Games alongside that when they made their version, although there are some distinct differences between the Fantasy Flight Games version and the version that was made by Pencil Equipped and Art Kohar that ended up in Squadrons. Now the specific vessel in Squadrons is the prototype version, so it would make sense that it would look a bit different from the Fantasy Flight Games one, which is presumably meant to be the Concord, the Amity, and the Unity, although the Fantasy Flight Games version is also divided into a Starhawk Mark 1, which is presumably those three ships, and then a Starhawk Mark 2. So it seems as though the New Republic did continue to make the Starhawk ships, even if there were some variations in them. It is a little bit disappointing that this is a ship that took such a prominent role and was something that Lucasfilm clearly had, but it didn't end up showing up in the Rise of Skywalker Resistance fleet, and I think that would have been a cool place for it to show up, at least with a couple instances. That's going to do it for our quick look at one of my favorite ship designs. I hope you found it interesting. If so, consider leaving a like or subscribing for more. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next time.